another video. And um, so now let's talk about how to use something like a ruler uh, to do scientific measurements and use sig figs. So you need to communicate your accuracy and you need to use the rule of one tenth. So find the smallest increment and record your measurement to one tenth of that. Um, and, uh, or close to, so one tenth of that, that's the rule. So if I wanna measure the length of this line using this ruler, I can see that the smallest increment equals one centimeter. It's zero, one centimeter, then two centimeters, so one more centimeter. So uh, record measurement, so record to one-tenth of that. So one-tenth centimeter equals 0 0.1 centimeters. And um, again, this follows the rule that we've been talking about for accuracy, which is you report all the digits that you know 100%. We know that this is three something. Now, whether it's 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, we're not sure, we're, I'm sure at least, and I think you might be, that it's not halfway, so it's not 3.5. In fact, if I draw that line, I might say 3.3 centimeters. I could say probably 3.2 centimeters. I don't think, well, you might say, no, I don't think you could get away with 3.1. And I don't think you could get away with 3.4. So either of these values could be correct because there's some uncertainty in that tense place. Now here, the smallest increment is one millimeter. So record to Zero point one millimeter. Now again, we're going to record all the digits that we can see. So it's going to be sixty-five. So it's between sixty-five and sixty-six. So sixty-five millimeters for sure. But now we need a tenth place, and for this one, the spacing is getting a little hard to see. So there may be slightly more error. Although overall, this is going to be much more accurate because it's got smaller markings than the ruler up here. But it might be, so I'm going to say 65.8 uh, millimeters. I'm going to go, could be 65.9, 65.7. These are all fine measurements for this. It doesn't look like it's halfway. I don't know, maybe 65.6 millimeters. Write down 65.6 millimeters as well as an acceptable option. I'll be looking for that. And you can see there are more measurements here that are possible than this one, and that's okay. The, the, the point is still well taken, which is that the error is in the one-tenth part beyond the limit of the markings. Those are the acceptable values. Now for measuring volume, we're gonna measure volume in beakers, graduated cylinders, and burettes. Um, typically, or you will uh, certainly um, in the next course. Uh, now in a beaker, you would tend to see what a flat, so this is, let's say H2O, and this is air. And you'll see a line here. And we're gonna try and attempt to measure where that line is, because that's how much water's in there. And I see for here that there's the 40 and the 50 line, and it's between 40 and 50. So the um, smallest increment is actually 10 milliliters.
you always read to one tenth of that, so your record to one milliliter. Meaning the nearest one milliliter. And I'm looking at this and it looks like it's more than 45, but less than 50. So I might say 47, and uh, you don't know what the units are, but these are milliliters. It should say milliliters right on the beaker, but I cut that part out when I made I didn't put that in when I made it. I could see 47, I could see 48, I could see 46 milliliters here. Those are the acceptable options. Now, uh, beakers are tend to be big. Uh, graduated cylinders and burettes tend to be smaller. And especially when you're leading, reading glass graduated cylinders and burettes, you'll see this curved interface. And that curved interface has a name. It's called the meniscus. Meniscus. There we go. S-C-U-S. Meniscus. And you always read the center of the meniscus. And very commonly, the center of the meniscus is the lowest point. I have seen uh, a meniscus or two where it curved up. And the point is, always read the center. Now, uh, another thing you should know, this is an eyeball. And when you read a meniscus, you always have your eyeball straight at the level of the meniscus, not above and not below. And if I see this, well, this is going to be uh, this line is 35. This line is 40. So this is going to be 36, 37, 38, 39. So it's between the 36 and the 37 lines. And it looks like about halfway. I would give this 36.4, 36.5. maybe 36.6 and again these are going to be milliliters these are going to be uh, a, a water that's in this graduated cylinder so you can see we've got some error in that last digit here what's tricky about burettes is the 20 is up here and the 21 is down here so as we go it's going to be 20.1 let's see 20.4 20.3 it's between 20.4 and 20.3, almost all the way to 20.4. So I might still call this 20.39, 20.38. It does look like it's above the 20.4 mark, but I would give you 20.40 as well. Now, you can see that the burette is the most accurate because it has four sig figs. The graduated cylinder, this one and many of them, by the way, have three sig figs and beakers typically have two sig figs. So if you want to measure the volume of a fluid in milliliters accurately, the most accurately, use a burette. And that's what we'll do as much as possible when we're taking measurements in lab. Ah, this one. This one's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to draw the meniscus for you. At least where I see it. Sorry, I, when I borrowed this from a source, it didn't. I couldn't figure out how to do it and have the lines show up. But now, hopefully, you can see the lines. Please draw the lines on yourself. And then uh, you'll see that this one, so let's see, so smallest increment. And reading. So your smallest increment here is going to be uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 
so one milliliter. That means you have to read it to the nearest tenth of a milliliter, even if it's exactly 14. So the correct measurement here is 14.0 milliliters. I'm going to ask you to do the rest of these. Please do do them, and I will check your work and make sure when I grade your lecture outlines.